Hi guys, Rachel here. Uh, yet another video about LARP in the UK and how we do it. This week I have been asked how serious injuries can occur when you're fighting with latex weapons so I thought I'd make a video to show you what the weapons look and feel like. Um, please bear in mind that I don't make them. I do not make the weapons. I only use them and I am speaking from the experience of being walloped a bit too hard. It happens and I don't blame anyone for it. Um, if you're looking for someone to make LARP weapons for you, however, there's a ton of links in the description. Go and check them all out because they're all amazing. Um, yeah, so. Basically, the question you're asking is how on earth do foam weapons actually cause damage? I mean, they're foam, right? The whole point in foam is to be soft. Well, not quite. The foam used is high-density foam that's been wrapped around a fibreglass core and secured there. Um, the minimum requirement of LARP weapons is two inches of foam between you and the core, which is that much? Maybe? I don't know. Don't have a ruler. Um, it's not enough to take every single pound of the force. Um, with that amount of foam, if you don't pull your blows, you are going to cause some damage. Bruises, even broken skin. You know, there's a bit more to it, but like I said, I don't make them, so I don't know the exact details. Um, it's not a pillow wrapped around a stick. There's one common misconception. It's not the children's foam toys that you see in the castle shops um, and at fairgrounds and stuff where kids can pretend to be pirates. It's high-density foam with enough give to stop bones from breaking, but that's about it. Um, for example... I have got here a staff. Um, looks very real, looks nice and wooden, got a nice leather handle on it. Lovely for me to grip. Um, as you can see, I can squish it, but it does take um, a certain amount of force to just sit here and squish it with my hands. Um, if this whistles towards you, at full force and connects with everything that the owner has got the foam is only going to break the impact so much you know um, if I if you if I hit someone with one of these and they weren't wearing any armor um, there's a very good chance that I break the skin uh, and I'd leave quite a hefty bruise as well um, so why not just wear armor well Sometimes there's not enough armour to go around. Sometimes it's too hot for some of us to be bothered wearing armour. I mean, chainmail in the middle of summer is just... Whew. But yes, if this connects full force on unprotected skin, then it's going to cause some damage. Um, then we have other issues like stabbing. Uh, the only weapons that you can stab with that I know of are stab-safe spears. Um... I don't know of any stab-safe swords. I don't think that it, the principle works like that. Um, so, with stab-safe spears, I don't own a spear to show you, but I've got my boyfriend's hammer, which has got the same basic principle. Now, um, with stab-safe spears, the core stops a few inches short of the tip, so that when you stab someone... The tip of the spear does this, which means that you can use the spear for its original purpose, which was thrusting, and not risk injuring the person on the other end or damaging your spear. Um, if you stab someone with a weapon that isn't stab safe, for example, this sword doesn't have the stab safe tip. Um, if you stab someone with this, you are going to really hurt them, you know, uh, possibly actually stab them, and you also risk the fibreglass core actually coming out of the tip, and that's your weapon damaged, and your friend is now full of fibreglass. Fibreglass splinters are not pretty. So, you don't stab people with non stab safe weapons. This is a nice sword. This is not my sword, this is my friend's sword. I may have stolen this sword. <laughs> Um, 
basically the broken bones that I mentioned in my first video about safety at UK LARPs, the broken bones that have occurred um, at my events haven't been as a result of weapons used improperly. Um, but people have been put out of action for the rest of the event because someone was being silly. Um, myself included. Uh, for example, uh, I was playing a zombie, well, NPC in a zombie, I was crewing. So I was crewing, I went up as a zombie, and we were told to make big, slow, exaggerated movements because we were undead, and I lifted my arm up to face one guy down, and credit to him, it was a good shot, but he was a little overexcited. He was stuck in the heat of the moment, fight or flight kind of thing, and he hit me a little bit too hard, and there's a pressure point right there on your arm, and he hit me right on that pressure point and my whole arm went dead. And when I got the feeling back in it a few hours later, I couldn't use it very well at all. That's my right hand. I'm right-handed. I was out. I was out of that fight. I was out of that weekend. I had to ask for talkie parts because I just couldn't do anything else. Um, the arrows in a LARP system are they can also be dangerous. The foam tips are usually the right shape and size to fit your eye socket and if someone has bodged a load of LARP arrows from real arrows, which I have seen, they were just real arrows that someone had wedged a foam tip over the top, um, then you run the very real, real risk of actually shooting someone. Um, knowing I was in a battle with some of these bodged arrows made me feel physically ill. Um, but arrows are also quite dangerous in that, like I said, they can fit your eye almost perfectly and arrows end up on the floor, uh, so that's shit all over the tips, if you'll pardon the language. So if you hit someone in the eye with an arrow that's already been around at the weekend, then there's a very good chance you're going to ruin their eyesight. Um, so arrows you have to be especially careful with. Especially, especially careful with. So... This is why we pull our blows. This is why we hit lighter and slower than our American cousins are used to. And this is why we focus more on looking good than we do on hitting each other as hard as we can. We want the combat to be as safe as possible while still being challenging. So we still move quickly and we still hit fairly hard, but not hard enough to put everyone out of action. Um, because then we wouldn't have a weekend long event. So it's a good compromise, we feel. Um, Thank you for watching. Uh, if you feel I've left anything out, or if you've got any suggestions for future videos, then leave me a message, either in the comments or send me a personal message. Uh, like I said at the beginning, there are some links to some truly fantastic weapons makers in the description. Cannot encourage you enough to go and take a look. Uh, the next video I make uh, will be on healers and the stigma surrounding them. So I will see you next week. <laughs>